next guest calls quite a stir in Congress last week when he testified at the Congressional Subcommittee hearing on government regulations and creating jobs. One of the riskiest things you can do in America is to hire somebody. And because of that reason, because of all the liability uh, from government, from lawsuits that you have put on employers, most small businesses, the, their main concern is how not to hire people. How can I grow my business and hire as few people as possible? That is not something that happens in the market. That is something that happens as a consequence of government. Well, joining me now is CEO of Euro Pacific Capital and author of How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes, Peter Schiff. Peter, good to have you with me. Thanks for having me on. All right, why is it risky to hire people right now in America? Well, it's very risky. You know, unfortunately for po po politics, there are a lot more people who are employees than employers. So politicians want to get votes, so they promise all sorts of special privileges for employees. But when they do that, they put obligations and risks on employers. It is so easy now to sue your boss if he doesn't create the job in the exact manner that the government specifies they have to do it. And because of all these costs, not just the, the, the taxes, but the potential litigation, a lot of business Businesses do what they can not to hire. You know, my uh, precious metals company, Europac Metals, we don't have a receptionist. We just have a voicemail system. So we find a way to get around hiring somebody by using a machine. But the main reason for that is the government makes it too expensive and too risky to hire a human being. That, that's amazing to me. Now, you got fined $15,000 because you hired somebody. Explain yeah. how in the world, in a time when the unemployment rate is the highest it's been in decades, you get in trouble because you hired hired somebody. Well, actually, the, the trouble started back in 2008, and the funny part was a lot of these big brokerage firms were firing people, yet they were getting bailout money from the government. I was hiring people and then getting fined for doing it. But it's not, the government technically didn't fine me. It was a, a regulatory body called FINRA, which is an, an agency that, a self-regulatory body that regulates all the brokerage firms. But the U.S. government requires me to be a member of that organization. Is it a private organization? It's private, but the government requires you to be a member. If you're not, not a Obamacare, member. Obamacare, it, it, it's, it's really something you're being forced by the government to participate in something in the private Sector Correct. In order to operate. But, and a lot of the rules and regulations that they enforce come down from, from Washington, from the SEC. But so what happened was my business was kind of growing rapidly in 2008, and I was hiring a lot of people. I didn't realize I didn't have regulatory permission to grow my business that fast. Whoa, 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 wait, hold it. Why do you need someone to give you permission to grow your well, business? Well, we, we shouldn't need it, but that's what the regulations do. And so what happened is they sent a letter to my, uh, my, my chief compliance officer telling us to stop hiring until we got the appropriate permission. He didn't show me that letter. I kept hiring anyway. And so that's what really got me into trouble. Not, not because I hired too many people, but because I didn't stop hiring when I was told to. But I ended up spending maybe a half a million dollars in legal bills. Whoa. I finally... Wait a minute. They fined you 15000 and then to fight it, you spent half a million? Well, the fine didn't come until the end. It was, the, the problem was they sent me a letter telling me to stop doing something, and I didn't listen to them. So that was the big investigation. Hey, why did you keep hiring people when we told you not to? And I had to show that it was just a mistake, that I wasn't just flagrantly violating the rules. But the, the whole point of the matter is the real reason that these, these regulations exist, it's not really to protect the, the investors, in my opinion. What protects my, the investors is me, is my desire to uh, have a good, uh, a, a good brand, to have rep, good reputation, to keep my customers. It's competition that protects the customers. But what these regulations really do is they protect the large brokerage firms from the smaller firms like mine that are trying to grow, and the regulators put all these roadblocks in our paths. You know, so many small firms are failing. I started my business back in 1996, there is no way that if the regulations that are in effect today were in effect back then, it would be impossible. I wouldn't have had the resources to overcome the barriers. Now, I, I guess one of the things I'm trying to understand, and maybe you can help me, but if, if I were the people who had fined you, what is the rationale for saying that they've got to give permission in order for you to hire people? Well, you, oh, they, tell you, they tell you how many reps you're allowed to have and how many you're allowed to add. And then there, there's a safe harbor rule that says you can add a little bit more than that. I went through the safe harbor rule. I was a small firm, and I was getting a lot of new business in 2008, 2000, because you know, I had a book that came out crash-proof, and mm -hmm. a, a lot of the forecasts were coming true. So people were seeking out my services. So I had to hire more people. And 
the, the, the supposed rationale is that the regulators want to make sure that if your business is growing that rapidly, that you have enough of the compliance oversight to make sure that all the rules and regulations are, are being enforced. And, you know, the, the process of getting permission to hire more people, it's not just a simple form. It, it, it's, it's a complicated document that needs to be filled out right. It needs to be submitted. It's not an easy task. Uh, but I just finally got permission, when it was last week, uh, to grow the business. So I'm glad that I got it. I would have liked to have been growing the business a couple of years ago, but I finally got permission to do so. Peter, jaws are dropping all over America. That's the sound that I'm hearing, even in New York, as people are amazed that in a very tough economy, when people need jobs, the government puts roadblocks between you hiring people and people coming well, to work. Well, all it's regulations just... are roadblocks. I mean, regulations increase the cost of hiring people. And whenever you make something more expensive, you know, there's less demand for it. And hiring people is very expensive. Running a business, for a lot of businesses, the difference between profit and loss are the regulations. You know, I spend more on compliance. I've got a whole compliance department. I spend more on compliance than on rent. I have six offices. I have two offices in Southern California, one here in Manhattan. My rent is tiny compared to what I have to spend every year just to stay in business. Incredible. Look, look at the, my, my legal bills. All my legal bills have to do with compliance. I pay more in legal bills than I do in rent. And, well, and you, all the, <laughs> you are hiring people. Unfortunately, they're all lawyers. That's pretty evident. <laughs> well, all right, coming well, up, we're you got to stay around, Peter. Now. you got to stay around because there's more to talk to you about. I'm going to ask Peter why he has moved some of his company's jobs overseas, as if you can't figure that one out. But we'll be back to talk to Peter about it in a moment. Middle class families shouldn't pay higher taxes than millionaires and billionaires. That's pretty straightforward. It's hard to argue against that. Warren Buffett's secretary shouldn't pay a higher tax rate than Warren Buffett. All right, Peter Schiff, you say the president is wrong on this. Tell me why. Well, first of all, Warren Buffett's secretary doesn't pay a higher tax than Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is the largest shareholder of Berkshire Hathaway. That's the majority of his wealth. And Berkshire Hathaway pays 35% corporate income tax. That's, that's his money. That's Warren Buffett's money. If his corporation didn't pay that tax, it would have been able to pay that money out to him in dividends. So it's completely disingenuous to pretend that Warren Buffett isn't paying a lot of taxes. And of course, the taxes that he is paying is in capital gains. And that's because Warren Buffett chooses to work for no salary. If he paid himself a salary through Berkshire Hathaway, he would pay a very high tax rate, just like I'm paying. I mean, I'm already paying well over 40% of my income in federal and state income taxes right now. You know, how much more do they want to take? <laughs> Uh, a lot more. Have you not been hearing the president? He wants to take all of it if he can. Yeah, get I know. You know, medieval <laughs> serfs only had to pay 25 percent of what they earned to the Lord. You know, well, I, I say, wish I could be <laughs> elevated to the level of a serf. And I've always said, God only asks us to pay a dime out of each dollar to, uh, you know, to take care of Him. You'd think that uh, the government wouldn't demand more than God does, but and, I guess. And we'd have a lot does. more to hide if the government wasn't <laughs> taking so much money to well, begin with. Speaking of Warren Buffett, because it's it's troubled me. His firm, Berkshire Hathaway, has been fighting the IRS, wanting to get some tax uh, obligations uh, eliminated. So it's almost as if I want to say, Mr. Buffett, if you're so interested in paying more taxes, just stop the protest that you currently have with the IRS for tax uh, assessments that the IRS has leveled against you and pay them all yeah. off and do well, it obviously proudly. He's, he's a hypocrite as well but you know the problem is the money that that the wealthy don't send to Washington that's the money that you that they use to grow the economy when you take money away from the employers business owners you're not really diminishing their consumption you're diminishing their investments their ability to fund new plant and equipment to hire people or to make loans to other businesses to other startups so we don't want money that would have been invested in the private sector productively to be sent to Washington be, to be squandered. Now you have also moved jobs overseas, uh, jobs that could have been in America, but you said you really didn't have a choice. Why is it oh. easier to move a job overseas than it is to hire somebody yeah. right here at home? Well, first of all, I had to open up uh, a, a, a bank offshore for my international clients. My brokerage firm, Europe Pacific Capital, I used to take clients from the UK, from Australia, from Hong Kong, from South America. But the government regulations that came in after the Patriot Act and the Anti-Money Laundering Act have now made it so expensive for me to accept 
business from foreigners that I've now decided to take to set up a whole new business out of the country and have all foreigners who want to do business with me do business with my offshore company instead. I would prefer, it'd be much easier for me to do business with them here, but the regulations make it too expensive. And in fact, not only that, I've had to impose account minimums now. For a long time, I you know, prided myself on the fact that no investor was too small. I didn't have a minimum. But I finally had to impose minimums because the regulations are so complicated. It is now so expensive for me to open up small accounts. I can't afford it, so I have to stop it. So you have the government. Here the government is trying to protect the small investor. But now the government has made it so expensive to even deal with the small investor that no one will take their accounts. So now they have to go and do it all on their own at a discount broker. The government has protected them from getting good advice. You know, P Peter, as, as we talk today, I, I guess I'm just stunned with the harsh reality. We hear it as a great part of political talking points in political speeches. But you have put the specifics right down for us to understand the very hard facts of how government, not just that government does it, but how does government get in the way of business yeah. and make it hard to function, hard to hire, yeah. hard to make a profit. Peter Schiff, I want to say thank you for being here. It's been a pleasure you, to have you here. Peter Schiff, remarkable story. It's really the kind of thing that just makes one mad to hear about.